The comments tree. The comments tree. Doesn't it feel like forever since the comments tree? I'm even gonna walk in between these buildings just for old time's sake because it's not too hot or too cold. So these generator things, or whatever they are, they're not making too much noise. That's why I used to walk in, you know, back here, and I don't anymore. Just, but what if the if the weather's milder, I'll do it. All right, let's get to it. Our good friend, our good friend, DJ Laser Blue. This guy. How many times have I made a comment based on something he said on one of my videos? Been here a long time. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers, and he was he was among one of the first. The video he's commenting on today is rece receding hairline, applying pomade after wearing a hat. Of course, as you know, that was the fifth, that was the fifth and final video I did while in Boone, North Carolina. B-O-O-N-E, Boone. And here's what he said, quote, Nick Shell doesn't poison his body with Propecia. Nick Shell won't have a hair transplant. Nick Shell won't fight baldness. Nick Shell accepts what life throws at him and moves on. Meet Nick Shell. End quote. Thank you. DJ Laser Blue, I like you. Because really, when it comes down to it, this is what should be in my 60 second trailer for my YouTube channel. I should reshoot it and just say that. Because that's really, if we were to, you know, pay $100 and have a big mission statement on the wall, ultimately that's what it would be. And uh, it's not to say that you should do those things, but it's to say I serve as a bit of a model to you. I let you sort it out. But ultimately, I'm giving you direction that you didn't have before you got here. You're younger than me. You're losing hair at a quicker rate than I am. And uh, you need some guidance in your life other than someone who's going to sell you something. Now, here's really what I want to get down to in this video, though. I want to ask you a question, and that is, are you emotionally attached to your hair? Are you emotionally attached to your hair? I made a video uh, a couple weeks ago talking about how anytime a person is defensive, deflective, or emotional, then there's a fundamental issue that you've got to uh, get to the bottom of. And that's why I'm asking this question. I'm, I'm, I'm submitting to you that there's a good chance that many of you watching my videos are emotionally attached to your hair. It's an emotional attachment. And when people are emotionally attached to things, they tend to think irrationally. Okay, everything I've said, no one could disagree with up to this point. That's, we all agree. If someone has an emotional attachment, they tend to make irrational decisions, and it's based on emotion, not based on, what's the word I'm looking for? Practicality. That's the word I'm looking for. So I feel, as DJ Laser Blue has pointed out, I feel that I'm not emotionally attached to my hair. In my early 20s, when I was uh, in Norwood too, I was emotionally attached to my hair, and it was kind of freaking me out. Then I ended up lucking out and still having this much hair at 36. But even then, I had to get to a point where I had to emotionally detach myself from my hair. And the more I reminded myself I was going to lose my hair anyway, so just go ahead and get ready for it, then, uh, you know, it all worked out. But still, I needed to be prepared. And I, it, this, is, uh, this is a perspective we haven't really looked at and talked about in its simplicity, is that is... Are you emotionally attached to your hair? Because as long as you are, you will fail. You will fail. You'll fail. As long as you're emotionally attached to your hair, you're not gonna move on in life like DJ says. It's true, you can't move on as long as you're emotionally attached to something. Then there's a good chance it's destined to fall out. Your hair is not attached to you, but are you attached to your hair? Emotionally, okay? I'm gonna close with this story. This story takes place around 1987, 1988. So this is about 30 years old, this story. And it was that summer, and my mom uh, took my sister and I, who you've probably never met on a, a hair loss channel. She's in some other videos, but. Uh, so my mom took my sister and I to this house in our town in Fort Payne, Alabama. And she's gonna let us both get a cat. So this lady had the litter of kittens. And uh, so we go to this, the, like the kitchen floor, there's a box of kittens. And I see the one that I wanted. With, I, I always liked the, the orange cats. I don't know, the orange, the good cat. But the orange cat didn't quite like me. It didn't really want me to get it. There was this other one that was white and brown. And it came right up to me. And my mom said, 
you should get the cat that comes to you, not the one that you're trying to chase. Because if it comes to you, then it's the one that's going to be the best pet. My mama's right. That story is over 30 years old. And I named it Gabriel because <laughs> we were learning Bible stories and Gabriel the angel. And so I named it Gabriel. And Gabriel ended up being a good cat. It all worked out. Good thing I didn't chase the orange cat, right? Now, obviously, this is a parable talking about really you and how you're wanting to chase that orange cat, which is symbolizing your you trying to keep your hair, trying to hold that in part of, as part of your identity, keeping that emotional attachment. Or you can choose the white and brown cat that it's coming to you. And what is that? What does it symbolize? It symbolizes you accepting your fate as a man who's going to lose his hair like so many of us of European descent. And then we get to move on with our lives and we're not emotionally attached to our hair and we're not irrational. We're not deflective. We're not defensive. We're not emotional because we move on with our life. That's everything you need to know about what Nick Shell has to say about hair loss. And again, a major thank you to our good friend, DJ Laser Blue.